What's going on everyone? Welcome to another run here in American Truck Simulator and Sunday Test Drive. Today we got the Peterbilt 586. It's a cut and paste over the 589 version 1.12. It's been out for a while and this version here unfortunately hasn't been updated since March. Uh, no, I, I don't have an explanation why, but uh, it is a nice looking truck and I really wish it had more support. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there would love to drive this truck. It's a great truck. The, the When I was in the used oil business, the fleet I was with was all either 389 or 386s. Um, unfortunately, this one here doesn't have a whole lot of options support. You only have one cab, and that's it. So no day cab, no low roof sleeper, no nothing. You can't even get rid of that spoiler up there. You can put an air dam up there, but I thought it looked a little too goofy, and I'm not hauling a box trailer, I'm hauling a flatbed. Um, three different choices of interiors, mainly the wheels. Uh, really not a whole lot of choices here. It does have some skins that come with it. This one here is the metallic cherry or something like that. You can see, uh, it actually to me it looks like it's orange peel. You know, the, the ripple and the imperfection in paint more than metallic in my opinion. But uh, I do have the super singles on here. Uh, not a whole lot of choices in lights. Pretty much the ones on the cab and that's it. Um, no stacks. The only choice you get with the stacks is smoke which probably is not going to be a realistic thing with this truck. I do not see see a tank on here for DEF, but chances are this is a regen truck, uh, which means everything's all internal, and the regen is actually done without DEF, which means you're still not going to see smoke coming out of the stacks. If you do, it's probably because the truck's about to break down or blow up. Not either in either case, it's not good. Uh, so I do have the smoke off, but I do like the interior. It's better than that leopard print that I that we saw a few weeks back. Uh, what was that? The Coronado. Uh, so this was a popular fleet truck for the longest time, and now I see more Cascadias than the 386s. So it could be the truck is maybe a little dated or. Uh, you know, maybe the Cas or yeah, the Cascadia is more fuel efficient and main also cheaper. Fleets companies, you know, they look at that. You know, even if they can, if they can save themselves five grand off the sticker, ten grand off the sticker right off the bat, and then another ten to twenty grand in fuel costs a year, they'll go with that truck over this one, regardless of you know what their preference might be. So. All in all, though, the truck does look nice. Unfortunately, you are stuck with the stock SCS engine choices as well as the sound. I do have a couple of sound packs in the game here, and so some of those do work on this one. Um, but, you know, still, I'd like to have more engine choices. I'd like to have a different set of sounds. I mean, it makes me feel like I'm just driving a 579 and that's it. So, today's load, as you saw, it's the Infinity AX. Uh, yeah, that's a Fontaine Low Boy drop deck. Just a couple of tanks, and once they get through here, I think we're going to make it. Okay. So, heading over to Oakland Shippers with this one. I believe I'm in Sacramento right now. Not a very long trip. I've got three hours to do the job, and I'm going to be there in two, so... I do like the one custom item that's on this truck, and that's the lights in the back. They act as brake lights, too. Now, that's not something I had put in there. It was already in there by default. Same for the cab lights that you see along the bottom. So, by default, the truck isn't half bad. It looks fairly nice. But uh, still, having a little more customization would be nice. I'll tell you what, looking at the inside of this cab though takes me back because 
I had the same kind of cab in my truck. Um, the other trucks I drove within the fleet, you know, it was a, whether it was the 389 or this one, the 386, it was pretty much the same layout as well. So it really takes me back. The only difference I've noticed with this one as well as the 389 is the wheels. The steering wheels that everyone seems to still put inside these trucks are outdated wheels. The wheels that come on these trucks, these steering wheels now, don't have the chrome support or the chrome horn uh, button. It's basically the same kind of wheel that you might have in your car with the big plastic pillow in the center. So, you know, I really, I would like to see that get updated. I mean, you see the SCS trucks and they have the Bluetooth as well as the stereo control, cruise control, all that stuff that's on there. Um, you know, I'd like to see that brought over because I know it's in those trucks. But we're still using steering, like this wheel here, this one was on one of our old VAC trucks. That was like a 2001 model or something like that. So, it is outdated accessories in some areas, and uh, and it's one of my pet peeves, really, to be quite honest. But besides the interior. You had three choices here, steering wheel, you had three different steering wheels mainly. One of them was an all wood that matched the dash, and I thought that was just a little much, but uh, two different bumpers, you got of course the bug deflector up front, so there it is right there, hood mirrors, um, and that was pretty much it. So. Not quite sure the reason behind that, and, and there are some issues with it as well. I mean, you can see the mirror here, how that's looking with the lines going across, and the right side mirror I'm not a real fan of. Maybe I can adjust it. I haven't tried that yet, to be quite honest, but, uh, you know, there are some imperfections if you really want to nitpick, which I'm not going to do. I'm just pointing them out. This, this cab, though, really leans. I've noticed that already, especially in the corners. A lot of body roll with this cab, which I'm not quite used to, and I'm not quite sure where that characteristic is from. You know, what is it? Is it a stock SCS thing, or is it built into the 389, or actually, is it actually built into the truck here? This is a standalone truck as well, so this does not replace anything in your Peterbilt dealership, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, the other truck I wanted to try, which was a 387, I installed it, went to go purchase the truck, and I wasn't able to find a Peterbilt dealership. Now, on this profile, I don't have everything unlocked, you know, dealership-wise. But of the two Peterbilt dealerships I have already discovered, they were both turned into Green Line or Green Lane service centers. So, like the one in Reno, that's a Peterbilt dealership, not anymore. With the 387, it turns it into a Green Lane service center. So, not quite sure why that is, or why whoever is working on that decided to go ahead and do that. But rather than searching all night, either quick tripping between garages or porting the truck to every town, because uh, the only other two towns that had a truck dealership were out in Arizona. Because that was also on the 1.3 pack. But I wasn't about to go over there just to find one. So I ended up deactivating the mod, which is unfortunate. I kind of wanted to run it. I can see 
changing subjects real quick, look at that mirror out the side. It's got the same glitch as a 389 does. I mean, this is based off the 389, remember. But that right side mirror is frozen. Now it's working fine. That's been fixed on 2.0. But all in all, this is not a bad truck, to be quite honest. I, 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 it's growing on me, to, to be honest. I'm not going to replace the 389 with it. So those who are 389 fans and love the truck, I you know, that I have set up, don't have to worry. I'm not, this is not going to replace it. But, if it was as good as the 389, yeah, I think the 389 was going to find itself parked for a while. But, unfortunately, this truck I find lacking, so it's going to have to go to one of my AI drivers in the fleet. And, uh, I'll move on to something else. I'm really having to take those corners wide with this trailer. That does look nice. You don't really have to stop, although it wants you to anyway, so screw it, try to keep some realism. Normally that's where you would pull up, the guard would come out, you'd sign in, he'd tell you where you're going to go. I have to say, I would like to see this truck become one of the normals. If SCS was going to release this truck into the fleet along with the 579, I'd be happy with it. I like it. I do. I wish it had more options, and I wish it was more of a standalone instead of a cut and paste. And then also cut and paste with the motors and transmissions that are, are already with the stock SCS. It's a mix between a 389 from Viper and a 579 from SCS. And it looks like a 386. Not a bad looking truck though, in my opinion. I like it. It's growing on me. Just in this short trip here, it's growing on me. So, hopefully you guys like it. Give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Share it if you want. That's great. Follow me on Facebook. And keep up to date with everything going on. Like the special live stream I'll be doing either later on today or Monday. And I'm right now I'm leaning towards Monday afternoon, early evening. Uh, I will finalize everything. I'm not going to wait until an hour before and then say, okay, I'm going live. So right now I'm leaning towards Monday afternoon, early evening, somewhere in that area. I try to do a longer live stream than just the two hours or so. So we're probably talking three, four, five hour live stream. Um, Memorial Day weekend, a lot of people are not working. So 
Monday afternoon, Monday evening, you guys should be, you know, most people are going to be done with their family stuff anyway, so hopefully you guys can join, if not to watch and chat it up, join us online. So, until then, have a good weekend. Thank you for watching. Take it easy.